Welcome back to Weekend Prime and today we are back to discussing issues that affect your health and today we are looking at nutrition and how it affects your health. Last week we looked at keeping fit Keeping fit for a healthy life, sorry, and proper nutrition was part of it. Good nutrition is one of the keys to a healthy life. Having a balanced diet with proteins, starch, vitamins, and minerals is important if one is to be healthy and reduce risk of lifestyle diseases, obesity, or malnutrition from the lack of some of these components in a diet. Over the festive season, many tend to indulge in otherwise unhealthy eating. Tonight, our focus is on nutrition and health this season. And with me in studio to discuss this issue is uh, Belinda Otieno, who is a nutritionist and a dietitian uh, who also manages uh, diabetes. We have Dr. Jacob Shabani, who is a consultant, family physician, who is also an assistant professor of family medicine at the Family Medicine Department at the Aga Khan University Hospital, and Gladys uh, Mugambi, who is a nutritionist and the head of Nutrition and Dietetics Unit at the Ministry of Health. And we'll get straight to the discussion. This festive season, people will tend to indulge in a lot of eating, in a lot of celebrations to enjoy the festivities. How should people be eating this season? And I'll start with you, Gladys. Yeah. Uh the rule remains that they should eat a balanced diet, but if they have to eat foods that are not uh, healthy, like high sugar uh, drinks, if they have to eat a lot of meat, then they must ensure that they are exercising and or they are, uh, they are able to, to, to utilize what they are, they are, they are taking. Mm -hmm. so, the rule remains the same. They only need to be careful. Okay. Dr. Mm -hmm. so that people don't come knocking to your door when January hits here, yes. how should people be eating this festive season? I think the key is uh, to know your portions and to eat in moderation. Mm -hmm. There is a popular saying that we say, you are what you eat. And if we remember that and, and eat a balanced diet, as my colleague has said, mm -hmm. and in the right portions, mm -hmm. you'll live a healthy life. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are to indulge a bit because it's a season of festivities, remember, keep to small portions. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Belinda, I know here we have quite an array of what looks like real food. How should people eat this food and in what portions should they do so? Um, I, I think what is important usually on our focus on nutrition is uh, we need to realize that uh, your body is what you eat. The type of food that you give it is exactly what it's going to portray. So nothing changes in the festive season. So you still have to maintain what you're eating because otherwise your body still needs the vitamins and the nutrients that it requires to function. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what is important for us usually is uh, as much as we want to indulge, and that is something very common that I'm getting right now um, at, at the clinics. Everybody's like, I'm not coming to see you because it's a festive season and I'll see you in January. Let's not forget it's such a short period eh? and whatever you're going to indulge in might even cost you more. Because one of the things will be, we, if we had started a program, then we will have lagged behind because of the two weeks and then we are starting again. And remember, it's our eating habits that are our eating habits and our choices that we are making. So what is important is the choices have to come first, mm -hmm. meaning the balanced diet will still remain. You still take in your carbohydrates, which, are, which gives you energy. You still take in your proteins, which are your bodybuilding foods. You still take in your vegetables and your fruits. That is what builds your immunity. Mm -hmm. So nothing changes. Your water will come in, the amount of fat that you need to take. Everything has to be in portions. And you have to have at the back of your mind, and it's very important that you must practice mindful eating. Mm -hmm. Okay. And from what is on display here, could you just take us through because uh, some of this uh, what is commonly found in homes and what people are likely to eat, how should they eat these foods? Um, first, what I'd like to point is uh, it's very important for us as a nation and even from our homes, eh? and Gladys will agree with me, we are out as nutrition trying to encourage people to cook more at home. And because what uh, you have actually cooked, you know exactly what you put in your food, how it was prepared, how fresh it was. Secondly, we have to go back to our traditional foods. You know, what we used to call like the African leafy vegetables, the managus, the kunde, the likes, the skumawiki, that is where we need to go. And uh, what needs to be is, uh, when you look at your food, you have to look at how is it beneficial to you. Say, for example, if I want to eat my red meat, 
My, uh, if I want to eat my red meat, you know, that which has a lot of fat is what we like because of the taste and all that. And you know, when you're burning it, the, the, the smoke on the fat gives it such an aroma and all that. But you see, when you eat that, you've given your body, the, the, the fat that you get from the animal, the animal fat, has an effect on your health because that is what is going to build on your cholesterol. So most important for us, say for example, if I'm going to eat my red meat, the red meat needs to be lean, meat, lean beef. Make sure if you're buying the beef, trim off the excess fat. And then we have to work on the portions. Key here is you can enjoy as much as possible, yes, but it has to be in moderation. Mm -hmm. So that beef, make sure what you're taking is going to fit in your palm which is, if, if I'm using this, this is about three to three pieces. If mm -hmm. you're doing the usual cuts at home, it's about six pieces. Mm -hmm. And this is the thickness of the beef. Mm -hmm. And then apart from that, we, we forget a lot of things because this is the Nyamachoma festive season. But uh, how is the Nyamachoma prepared? Remember, there's the charcoal, the carbon, mm -hmm. and all that, the direct heat, and that makes it even. It, 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 it spoils the function of the beef. Mm -hmm. So since what we are looking for is the bodybuilding activity in it, then we must also apply the correct cooking methods. Is, isn't that what gives it the taste of the nyamachoma and what makes people enjoy? If, if yeah. now, say, that smoke and what not is mm -hmm. going to uh, distort the beef and that is what people enjoy, then how well should they prepare it? You see now, when it comes to food, usually most of us, we eat for taste. Eh? But we need to eat for health. And health means that you also start to look at the cooking methods that you have to apply mm -hmm. to ensure that you get all the nutrients from that food. Mm -hmm. So meaning that if, for example, I want to prepare my skumawiki, mm -hmm. I cannot cut the skumawiki or call mama boga in the morning, cut my vegetables when I come from work, I'm going to pick it, I've lost the, nutrition, the nutrients from it. So the best thing is usually to take your boga at home, uh, wash the mboga before you cut it. And then even if you're cutting, you know, we like that thing, the mm -hmm. thinly sliced one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be thinly sliced, just to do good portions on it. And then cooking time, you take a very short time in it. What I like people to do in the experiment that you need to carry at home, take, uh, take your vegetables, where after you've cut them, uh, put them in water, uh, put, wash them, and then sieve that water into a glass. And then uh, at the other side, take the usual vegetables before cutting them and take, take the same water and put in the glass. If you look at the one that was thin, it was already cut when washed, you'll see the green in it, eh? meaning your ve that is exactly where your vitamins have reached out. So all these things, the cooking methods, starting from the preparation, you know, things that we take for granted. The preparation step has to be accurate. It has to be something that retains the nutrients. Then when you get to cooking the foods also, it means whatever you're applying, not too much heat, not too much the deep frying and all that. Mm -hmm. It has to be within the, for example, the cooking methods. You can boil your food, you can steam your food, you can grill it. You know, something that retains as much nutrients as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Gladys, anything to add on this portion, especially, okay, people may look at that and think that's a very small portion of beef to take. Yes, yeah. Actually, that is the right portion as she has uh, demonstrated. And uh, I just wanted to add that uh, uh, we shouldn't feel like uh, choosing the right way to feed. So some people feel like it's a punishment. Mm -hmm. How do you tell me not to eat nyamachoma? Mm -hmm. Then if you have to, because maybe you've formed a habit, then don't take too much. Take a piece or two, and then eat the other normal meat, which has no, no fat. Mm -hmm. And then the methods of cooking, as she has said, mm -hmm. are affecting the nutrients that uh, you require. Mm -hmm. So I would like to add that the issue of portioning mm -hmm. is very key, mm -hmm. and that is actually what nutrition is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also depends on your, your body size. So you need a nutritionist to be able to guide you so that if you want to reduce, then sh the, 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 the portions may be reduced accordingly. Mm -hmm. So that is for general uh, uh, eating, but maybe if you have a particular problem, you may have to get guidance so that you, you either get off certain foods which are causing you a problem or uh, maybe be given uh, guidance on how 
to consume them so that you don't go into mm. a more serious problem. Okay. Maybe Dr. can talk about Yeah, I actually diseases. want to come to yes. Dr. and ask you, which of these foods give people a problem? Because, well, the nutritionist will tell you each of this food has a certain component which is important in, in one's body. But then we know some of these might cause one or two problems. So which of these foods are really problematic from a doctor's point of view? Um, actually, when you think about it, is that all foods have got benefit and excess of a particular thing, especially carbohydrates, which are the energy source, will end up giving you a lot of calories and it cause the problem of obesity. Too much protein also can be a bit difficult for your kidneys to handle. Mm -hmm. And for people who already have kidney disease, for example, they'll have a challenge digesting that excess protein that you're taking from meat. Mm -hmm. uh, You've heard about foods that increase the risk of cancer, for example, if you take red meat, and especially if it is processed, like let's say what you get in sausages and so on, and cooked by methods that cause a lot of charring. So like she was saying, a lot of uh, nyamachoma that causes a lot of carbon can slightly increase your risk of getting cancer of the large intestine and the rectum. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, we shouldn't be food averse. We should not fear food. We should be just cautious on the portions. So what we tell our patients is that unless you have a medical condition and, and your doctor can advise you accordingly, for the general population, eat the right portions from all the major three food groups that we are taught about as children that make a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. So the bodybuilding foods, the energy giving foods, and the vitamins and minerals which protect us from diseases. Mm -hmm. Now, we want you to eat a lot of vitamins and minerals when you're becoming old as an adult because they are what you call the antioxidants. They remove the things that increase our risk of getting cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want you to eat a lot of high calorie foods or high energy foods which will come from your carbohydrates and fats because they'll make you obese. Mm -hmm. And you don't want you to take a lot of proteins from the reasons I alluded to. So if you just remember a balanced diet, the right portions as they have alluded to, and sometimes when I talk to my patients, I like using body parts because they don't run away from you. She's demonstrated very well how much protein you need to take. A lot of people fight me for showing them that they need to take a carbohydrate the size of their fist. Uh, we, we've grown but we up like, uh, whole big ugali that you can't see on the other <laughs> and side. And several chapatis. Yes, and... exactly. Mm -hmm. And in this festive season, you have to be very careful that you can't eat for three days in one hour. Mm -hmm. So you have to watch your portions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of vegetables. I think what you can take with a bit of abandon is vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Belinda, he says you should eat a fistful of uh, carbohydrates. Are what we are seeing here, like the rice portion there, is that enough rice? Yes, it Sorry. is. Now, when, when, it comes to, when it comes to eating our food, number one, mm -hmm. if we look back in the 60s, we had smaller plates. But as we've progressed and there's money and we are into fancier plates and all things, the plates have become wider. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if, if for, for, for anyone, if you give me a wider plate, it means I need to serve more on my plate. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I will serve more. And then when you look at what you're going to serve on your plate, it's usually starch. We love starch because starch will give you that energy and it will make you feel good. And remember, the starch that we eat has sugar in it. So anytime you're eating your rice or your ugali, the best thing you're enjoying out of it, eh? because you're eating for taste, you like that sugary stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Then what has happened with these plates also is they've even become deeper. Mm -hmm. So if you're serving your food, you're simply taking like almost triple the portion that you're supposed to take. Then where have we lacked the discipline? No? We serve our plate, you eat, your body will prompt you, your stomach will definitely give you a message that I am full. But what you, do you do? You look at your plate and you say, I have to finish. I have to finish. Yes. I have to clean all this. Mm -hmm. So what has happened over time? We're taking in more than what we require. The moment you're taking in more than what you require then, that is where now your waistline will start to talk. You bought a skirt today or a trouser today or your belt, it's fitting today, in two weeks it's not fitting, simply because of the amount of starch that you're taking. So as Dr. Terry was saying, we have reached a place where we were trying to make people measure their foods, you know, the weighing scale and all those things. 
It can work, yes, but it needs the discipline. And it's also cumbersome for the patient. So what we've figured out, we actually have to teach you using your body parts, which mm -hmm. is easier. Mm -hmm. So if I want you to eat your starch, the size of your fist, this mm -hmm. is your fist. Mm -hmm. This is the portion of your, of your uh, carbohydrate, meaning on your plate, we're going to divide the plate into half. Now, we only use the inner part of the plate. You see, mm -hmm. for most of us, we want to use the outer part. So you use the inner part of the plate, you divide it into half, uh, into three parts. Half first, and then on one half, quarter. So on the quarter, this is going to fit in as your carbohydrate, mm -hmm. which is the size of your fist. And all fists do no, are not the same size. Mine and yours and his are not the same. So this is what you need. And then on this other side, on the other quarter, that is your protein. The protein is the size of your palm. And this is the thickness. Say, for example, if I'm doing maybe a fish, mm -hmm. then I'll measure up from here up to here. Mm -hmm. And remember, all, all, all these, you have to figure out. And, and, and I want people to try it because it means you have to try something first to see that it's work. it works. And, uh, and the other thing is we're also trying to encourage people to start say, getting signals from your stomach to your brain. There's communication. Mm -hmm. So you'll have your meat there. And then on this other portion, I want you to serve as much vegetable as possible. So, as, uh, so instead of the fruits and all that, because people say, can I do fruits instead? No, it's not fruits. It's not fruits. You do the vegetables. So half of the plate is going to be your vegetables. Out of this, what we have done is we are increasing your fiber intake. We have issues of constipation. And in most cases, when we ask people, so what does your meal constitute of? I do meat or it's beans and, and, and the rice. So where, does, where do you get your stool bulk? Your stool bulk is supposed to come from your vegetable Vegetables. intake. So we increase that, the vegetable will be there. And look at the cooking methods. I keep insisting the cooking methods have to be right. We have, um, we have a culture where we want to eat the vegetable for taste. So what do we do? You cook your, uh, your traditional vegetables, your managu, then you get cream, you pour into it. You get milk, you pour into it. You're giving it the taste, but you've killed the value. There's nothing, there's nothing left in it other than the taste. So the best thing is have it in its natural state. And then you'll also have your portions for your fruits. You can also have your fruit much later. You can drink your milk. You can have your water and all that. But the whole thing is, with the right portions, it means that there's nothing you're taking in excess. And your body will only take what it requires. Mm -hmm. What people need to understand is if you do anything in excess, your body prompts itself picking what it requires. What is not required is converted into fat. And that is the fat that we talk about around your waistline. When people talk about the tears and all those things, that is just an indication of how much you're eating, how much the excess that you're taking in over time. OK. And I know one, one of the foods, and you have it here, uh, that children very much enjoy is fries mm. and, and mm. chips. Should they eat them? No. You know, from this portion alone, or what we usually buy, say, for around 70, 80 shillings, eh? mm -hmm. the amount of fat that was used to prepare the fries is an equivalent of between 250 ml to 500 ml, depending on the type of fat, fat or oil that you use. Mm -hmm. Meaning, whatever you have taken in, you have not even taken in the potatoes, because it's, it's pointless. There's no energy in it. Whatever was, was to be used as the nutrient is gone. So because of the heat, number one, that is subjected to it, and then the amount of fat that is also there. Mm -hmm. Now, with all these things, there are, we, we have so many gadgets that have come out in the market. Say, for example, we have an air fryer. Mm -hmm. What I like about the air fryer, we will still enjoy your fries, but you'll only be using one tablespoon of oil. Mm -hmm. So for us to change in our homes, because our children will always love the fries. And then uh, say, for example, for you here, when you live, there's between this stretch of Mombasa Road, I mm -hmm. think there's so many there eateries. Are five. Mm -hmm. There are five. Them, and what happens with the eateries? The frying, it's about the frying. And that, the frying, that aroma will call you from so far and you know you have to get there. But we have to look at it like this. What is this that I'm eating out there that is mm -hmm. affecting my health? Mm -hmm. And then we as the parents, because we tend to, uh, to, 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 to love our children and they want to eat the fries and it's a Sunday and it's all that, what do we do? We go and buy the fries. So it becomes a norm. What, what will the baby eat? The baby loves fries. So we are giving more fries and more fries. Then we're asking ourselves, how comes my child is an obese? And Dr. Terry will tell you, we are having a very big challenge right now. Mm -hmm. Children under the age of 12, are, they're weighing more than their parents. 
You know, a child weighing up to, uh, uh, you find a child who is seven years weighing 63 kilos. That one cannot, it, 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 it's even harder for us to try and make the child lose weight because we cannot subject the child to vigorous activity to lose the weight because of the growth spurt. So we as parents, we need to look at, it is fries, yes, I'm giving. You will give, but in moderation. Mm -hmm. And it's not an everyday thing. I know it is a shortcut for most people for their children to eat. It cannot be a shortcut. The children have to be taught what to eat right from the time we start the complementary feeding. Mm -hmm. OK. Dr. is uh, this childhood obesity a very big problem? Or can we stop it on yes. its tracks? Uh, <clears throat> the challenging thing with obesity is that obesity begets obesity. Children become obese because they are born of parents who are obese. And the cycle starts from there, and you actually call it the tragedy from cradle to grave. That once you start as a, a, your mother and father obese, you're likely to be, to be obese in the womb. You're likely to be born obese. And if you are a child who is obese, you're likely to become an adult who is obese. Mm -hmm. Now, childhood obesity in Kenya is on the increase. Uh, there have been several studies that have been done, and, and the rate is a bit shocking, in that in Kenya we actually have a dual problem of malnutrition or bad nutrition. Mm -hmm. So you have children who are have undernutrition, and then you have children who are obese. And the obesity rate is something in the region of even 10%. Mm -hmm. That's one in every 10 children in Kenya is obese. Now, obesity is not just a simple thing. It's not just a look. It's actually a chronic disease. When your child is born as obese, there are things that are going on in those fat cells. They are not innocent, packed under your skin. They are actually active they do something we call inflammation that increases risk of cancer. In children who are obese, they already have starting problems. They get into premature puberty. They get problems of infertility when they grow up to be adults. They get an increased risk of diabetes, increased risk of high cholesterol, increased risk of even stroke, problems with their joints. So they get arthritis early uh, and uh, their self-esteem is uh, uh, greatly disturbed. They get more depression because they're teased in school and so on. They can't participate in sport. They have more problems of asthma. So when you look at obesity, it's, it's, it's like the disease that joins everything else. Mm -hmm. And you're actually setting up your child to more problems in future. So when they become adults with obesity, the increased risk of diabetes is still there. Uh, they actually get Alzheimer's early. And the sad thing is that obesity by itself is now recognized as a risk for cancer. It causes cancer in, uh, like breast cancer in women who've reached menopause. It causes the cancer of the pancreas. It causes cancer of the gallbladder. It's associated with cancer of the prostate in men. So it's not as innocent as it used to be thought of. Mm -hmm. and, and when you think of these complications of obesity, we need to start getting things right, as she said, when you're children. What signals do we give our children? For their birthday party and for their celebrations, we reward them by cake. Mm -hmm. Why don't you make a favorite cartoon character out of a watermelon? And they will enjoy that, and they will take that as a notion that this is how we get rewarded. Mm. Don't reward them that every Sunday we have to take you out for the favorite, and now there are very many. It's mm -hmm. like a competition. There's KFC, I understand McDonald's is soon uh, going to be here, and Burger King, and so on. These fast foods places should not be the reward system that you give our children. Okay. Maybe even as policy in, mm. in, in tuck shops in schools, we should not have snacks that are not healthy. Okay. And maybe pack healthy snacks for children. But children imitate what we do. Mm. So as adults, if we eat wrongly, they will learn from us. Mm. And if they get the notion that vegetables, and I think this is a challenge I put mm. across to men, because mm. sometimes when men we get to the house, if vegetables mm. is cooked, it's in chakula ya, <laughs> Sungura, I don't eat this. And if, if they keep learning out from you that vegetables are bad, mm -hmm. they will not take them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you've really painted uh, a 
picture about obesity and all the complications. Yes, yes. And mm -hmm. I would want uh, Gladys to comment on that and tell us what, as a country, we are doing about this. After this short break, when we come back, Gladys, you, you'll be able to tell us what we are doing about uh, these issues of nutrition. So we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll pick it up from there.